This is another African piece of art. So from unit six in our curriculum, it's the wall plaque from the Oba's palace. And uh, it is a piece of art from the Benin empire. And think of the Benin empire as the like present day Nigeria. And the Oba, which you see up here, this new term, is the word for king. And he is the highest political, religious authority in their kingdom. He represents the ancestors. So he is really the center heart of all of that community. Uh, and so you're seeing in this image, the two college board images. One is the brass wall plaque. So from where the title comes. And then the other one is is the real Oba, you know, the Oba in context currently and uh, you know, how he would look in history as well. So it's the actual human being who is the Oba of the Benins. So let's take a look close up at this really cool piece. And we're going to use a lot of the terms that we've used in the past. So um, this is kind of a traditional way to suggest power. Uh, so since the Oba is the highest political religious authority and you know, just really the center of the community and, and the group, you've got him in the center of the image. So this is the Oba. Hopefully when you were looking at that, there was no question about who in this image was the, the ruler or the leader, the Oba. And, you know, that we're going back to the old vocab term, hierarchy of scale, oldie but a goodie. So, you know, with these figures being smaller, the Benins are not, the artists from the Benin group are not trying to showcase depth. They're trying to show that you have an individual who has great power and they want to make it clear to you that you know which one of these people in this image is that person with power and they don't just stop you know with hierarchy of scale you've got also the um central figure and you've got you know him with the most jewels on he's got great coral beads on like this necklace that he's wearing a, a wonderful headdress uh, so there's that aspect of it too. He's more ornamented than everyone else, you know, in the center position, hierarchy of scale. Uh, he has attendance and, oh, this is so what I need when I go out in the sun, right? People shielding me either from the sun and the heat or perhaps shielding him from an enemy, you know, but he's got attendants around him who are clearly there to protect or serve his will. Um, so that's, oh, and he's also sitting on a horse and, uh, that could identify the particular Oba. He's sitting side saddle. So you can see his two feet are over on this side, oh, almost on top of this little person right here where, you know, that so small with hierarchy of scale. So clearly that person is one of the least important in the image. Um, but there was a time when the horses came over from Europe that um, the Oba started to ride horses and horses were introduced to the Benins. So this could be that first king to do that. But since, you know, with context being what it is and the story being what it is with this piece, we're not too sure because, well, you'll find, you'll see in just a minute, I'll talk to you about that. The other thing that you see are these, here's a close up of him. You can see these kind of carved, what we call rosettes. Maybe you can see them better. Yeah, you can see them better here. They look like flowers, but they also can seem like crosses. And so there's perhaps a Christian influence to the image here, which we will address actually right now. So um, let's go forward for a minute. So the reason, part of the reason this piece looks the way it does is because of the Portuguese. And the Portuguese had come into Benin, uh, this area in Africa, probably around the 1400s, you know, so 15th century. And they had this mutual kind of trade relationship, uh, a relationship that was, you know, the the Portuguese would offer coral. So you can see coral beads here. 
and brass bracelets. And they were trading um, the Benins for like spices, like pepper, stone beads, cloth. So it was a very mutual trade um, relationship. And so that's where these brass kind of plaques come from. They would melt down the brass bracelets that the Portuguese were wearing as armbands and so on. And they would make all of these plaques. Here's an example of all the different kinds of Benin plaques. They would make them uh, in the, now this should be a repetitive review term, lost wax process or hollow casting or the other term, Sire Purdue. And they were hung up in the Obas Palace. And they were, we think they were hung up in order of like historical leadership. So you could kind of trace the history of leaders in the Obas Palace based on the plaques. You know, it's kind of like in the White House, you have all these presidential portraits but I don't think they hang them in order, but the Benins did. Now, unfortunately, we don't have that order in, in uh, accessible to us anymore because of the British. So the British come into um, Benin and Africa as a colonial power in the 1800s. And in 1897, they, well, one, they disrupt the Portuguese trade with um, Benin, and the Portuguese were actually weakening in power. So the British basically were more of an aggressor with the Benin people. Eventually, what they did in this punitive expedition of 1897, they burned Benin. They burned the, the, the city, and they looted all of the valuables um, you know, they robbed the Obas Palace and they took all the valuables. And here you can see, this is a great picture, a sad picture, but a great one of all these different plaques. And here are other kind of looted treasures from the palace. And they took them with them and sold them. And so now a lot of museums around the world, and in particular in England, have these goods. And of course, the Benin people want them back. And so that's an ongoing uh, struggle between these two groups is, you know, who really does the art belong to? And when you have been taken over by force by a colonial power, like the Benin people were taking, taken over by the British, you know, is it the British right then to really own these pieces? So that is kind of like the, the Greek, you know, Elgin marbles, do the English have the right to keep those away from the Greeks? So it's a complex and uh, a stressful issue still um, between these groups. So that's an important element of context there with that. And here you have, again, some of those plaques that are located in various museums around the world. Uh, but trade with the Portuguese is important because that's where they get the materials. And uh, again, the very, very wonderful power sculpture that this is. And one thing I didn't go over, you know, one of the formal qualities here is proportion. And the Oba's head is quite large and that's because he is the center of wisdom. He has great wisdom. He's the center of power, the center of really religious power and political power. You know, the ancestors communicate through him. So he is, again, going to be in his art piece depicting himself as the most powerful, and this one clearly does. And then back to the original picture, again, with the trade, you can see these beautiful red coral beads that the Benin Oba is wearing uh, to signify power, and it becomes kind of that hallmark of their uh, power that they show. So again, that is the wall plaque from the Oba's palace an art piece of brass made probably about the 1500s to about the 1600s. And uh, again, Benin, the Benin Empire, modern day Nigeria, and the Oba, meaning king or ruler.